So you got a couple of women who are neighbors, yeah. and there's this house that's been sitting here, used as offices. <laughs> And you go to the Belgian embassy, do you remember how you interested them? I mean, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden it says, we're kind of a rat to bite up by the tail here, you know. I, yeah. I don't know what to do with it. it it's get away from you, yeah. It, yeah, it, was, God, it wasn't until we got some professionals like, well, like John Wallop, of course, who had such a big history background and his whole family for that matter, but then to have moved on to the other professors and learned people of history. Of course, me being so dumb from Kansas, I had no idea what we were getting into, you know, here. Well, I don't think anybody <laughs> could have just going along for the ride, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> did you, yeah. did the three of you then start reaching out to other people to just mm -hmm. become interested, to be involved in the society, or to give money, or to read the letter? I mean, how, it, it seems like this, grew over a lo very long period of time, grew slowly. Oh, yeah. But was it something where you were actively seeking people to be involved with the society oh, yeah. and the restoration? And how did you oh, go about that? Talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. Well, we, had, we, we had a quilt day where, you know, we had quilts out. Oh, and day you day did day. holiday decorations. You made wreaths. Oh, yes. Remember your oh, wreaths? I forgot all about that. <laughs> made wreaths till I thought they were coming out my yeah, ear. Yeah, and so them so 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 from the shop. And, yeah. And was the house really open on a regular basis at that time? Uh, I think that was, I think that was more or less when it was closed. Where, where was the shop at that point? Where did you? It was in the house that was over here that they tore down to put in yeah. the um, visitor, visitor center. Visitor center. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And, yeah, actually, oh, yeah. that was really fun. And then she when was, did... was the tea lady. The lady well, well, I remember the teas. Oh, that's I remember right. the teas. That happened. Right. Yeah. 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 So, again, there, by that time, you had a little shop over in this mm -hmm. ancillary building. Yeah. Did Park and Planning have someone here as a full-time director at that point? Running well, that shop? Well, running that, but also running the, the, it, the renovation. Sure. I mean, were you the project I manager was, for the I renovation? Was, yeah. I was running that shop. Well, John Walton was running John, the renovation. John, yeah, John yeah. was doing that. That was his. But, you, but from the sound of it, he didn't do anything without involving you. Oh, right. No, we all knew what was, it was happening. A, it was a consulting kind of right. relationship. Did I mean, John come to meetings? I can't remember. A few times. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Well, remember I, I said we came over and asked if we could open the house like once a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we did that periodically. Mm -hmm. And then they moved one of the offices out. And then they moved another office out. <laughs> and another office out. I mean, that took time. So where did, yeah. where did the run, I, if you can remember, walk me through that process. I mean, did... If they moved an office out, did you decide, all right, now we're going to work on the restoration of that room? Or was it, we're going to figure out where the doors were? I mean, I can't imagine where you started with all of this. Well, we did start on restoration because we didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what we did is when they got out, we cleaned up the room, you know, like I said. Staged it. Did, yeah. yeah. Borrowed yeah. antiques. Right. Look for, I was look yeah. for bar furniture and stuff yeah. like that. I can yeah. remember the day Anna and I were going to clean this room. They had just done a lot of plastering stuff. Clean it with a bucket and a rag. I started in one corner and I got, well, you can imagine, washing up plaster dust oh. in this room with a painted black floor. And I got about that corner done. I said, this is terrible. Man, where are you? Man was nowhere around. It was me. <laughs> yeah. Ended up scrubbing the whole floor. <laughs> Did you ever hear that story before? You oh, that? I probably but, was but in it, that story too. <laughs> right. right. Um, but it's, we did everything. We so did, when did when everything. did that? I mean, you really did do everything. You, I mean, there were a few of you who were doing everything it took to do it. But when did it begin to change? I mean, when did I, I, 
probably have the wrong description, but when did professional management, when did parking planning step up and say, all right, we're going to put money into this and we're going to hire contractors and we're going to, you know, when, when did that shift happen? We were in this house all the time, mm -hmm. you know, in and out all the time. And we kept, I don't know, we came in one day and down in the parlor. Mm -hmm. We were looking at the walls and they were damp. Mm -hmm. And shadow or whatever. Well, if you go over and touch the wall, it was wet. Mm. So um, that's when we decided to call in a consultant and find out why mm -hmm. it was wet. No money involved. And I can't remember <laughs> right. who the person was. That, can you remember who we called in? Was it for the painting? No, for the, oh. for the finding out why the wall was damp. Oh, um, no, I don't remember that either, but I sure remember the catastrophe. <laughs> well, what happened is Anne, Anne and I were talking, and well, she was working, Anne and I were not working, so we talked about this stuff more, and so she said, you know, there, there's something wrong here. And we called in Park and Planning, and they couldn't find anything wrong. So, Anne got in touch with somebody, and I keep thinking it's William Seal, but I can't swear to that. Mm -hmm. right. She asked him, you know, what to do. And he said, you're gonna have to have somebody come in and check it out. And so they did, and this, this had a metal roof on it back then. Mm -hmm. And the person that came in checked the roof. <coughs> and they, what happened was whoever put the roof on at the chimneys. Oh. <laughs> and the person that told us what happened, they capped the chimneys and all the water's going into the walls because it has no place to exit. Mm -hmm. That's kind of when Park and Planning got involved because they knew they were about to put a new roof on the house. <laughs> at <laughs> so, the very least. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, I mean, and when they started taking the, the house apart, that whole corner corner oh. over in that room was yeah. disintegrated. Yeah. In mean, which room? In, in the, the, in the, uh, bar, the park. The park. So again, just so I've got a time frame, about when would this have happened? That was probably the, let's see, we closed in what, 85? 85. So then the, clo the house closes, the offices are moved out, and it's closed, and how, how was the decision, who was involved in the decision? How was the decision made that, okay, now we're gonna get serious. We're gonna restore, the, we're gonna preserve and restore this house. Park and Planning. Park and Planning. Decided that. And they decided to commit money to it. Mm -hmm. And did they start committing staff hours at that point? I'm trying to think if, it seems that we were volunteers forever. I don't think yeah. ever. You still we, are. Ever. <laughs> Actually, one, at one point, I was house manager for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was getting paid like one or two years. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then Dan came along and. and uh, right. I remember you were the house manager, I think, when I first started mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So, so park and planning, <clears throat> who owns the house and owns the property, decides, all right, we got to get serious about this. Yeah. And do they make plans? and hire contractors, or do they ask you for what you know, or Peggy, and you had given them the letters, and so you probably knew more about the history of George and Rosalie Calvert's time than anybody did. I mean, were, were they using the letters as they made those decisions, or how, how, how was that whole process? I gave them to William C. My first translation, but that was for a restricted period. The building of the house, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I have a little. Didn't he advise us on who to get to do the restoration, Williamsfield? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. he knew Brandon. He brought Brandon right. in. That's Brandon Thompson. Uh, right. yeah. And then you mentioned Oak Grove. Were they? Did they do some of the structural work and the exterior work? They actually they made. 
they, they made um, tools to, to make some of the things in this house because mm -hmm. they weren't, they, they couldn't get any. I they, can't remember they, the name of the company that did the southwest corner over there, the house over there, because that was really torn down to the bare bricks. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. We were so afraid then, you know, it was just all going down to the <coughs> corner. Well, Joyce McDonald could probably help mm -hmm. with some mm -hmm. of these. You know where I yeah. think? Right. We'll might... talk with Joyce, see what she remembers, yeah. too. But... You might get, yeah, uh, some specific dates. If you look back in my old treasury book, where I've got dates and, yeah. and some sort of a description of what it went mm -hmm. for. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I'll never forget the reprimand that I got from Park and Planning when Ann, Ann and I went down there one time, and and they were worried that we were mixing Park and Planning money with our money, and they gave me a stern lecture on how you couldn't mix funds like that, and they went through my book and you know how casual my bookkeeping was because that's all I know, and. Uh, Ann and I walked out of there kind of mad, and I, I remember saying, I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> and I did. And well, I don't know anything with... about bookkeeping. I don't know about that. There's your bookkeeper down there. I'll tell you, you were the most honest and, <laughs> and capable treasurer. You know, she, but, she's saying but she I had to do it, account for all the money that the <laughs> columns had to balance. So. But there are names and, and little descriptions it's, on some of those things that. Probably helped. Good. Good when, it, so, yeah. when it came about interpretation, though, there are some stories back there, what have you, that the house was set to be interpreted as one period, but then it changed because of William Seal's yes. suggestion? Or what? Can you I, help me I through that? I think when they started restoring the house and tearing things out, they I found mean, other her things. Book and everything. Yeah. Because like there was no window there, that was all plastered up, mm -hmm. and um, they had those little uh, half moon windows. They were not original to the house; mm -hmm. they took them out. Mm -hmm. um, where the door is, it goes into the blue room down there. That had a big, huge fireplace in yeah. front of that. And that was not original. Right. So who who was? What's what was the source of information? How how did you? So what I hear you say is that they began doing restoration, and as they did, they found all sorts of evidence. Mm -hmm. Who was the sort of decider? Who said, "Oh, that's original to the house. That's not." I think it was her book. It was it a was lot of what all, Peggy all had. The authenticity that's what I figured. In the letters, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to be relying back yeah. on those. And then, as Patrick said, was was the decision of, we're going to interpret this house primarily to George and Rosalie Calvert's time, was that a hard decision to come to? Who was involved in it? And how did you get there? We were going to do it the Civil War time. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we were thinking about um, Charles Benedict's mm -hmm. time. And we did have a weekend where we had a, an open house, I mean, the whole weekend. And people came and spent the night here. And we had a picnic out on the portico and things like that. Um, and the kids were dressed in period costumes. And we thought it was going to be, that was going to be our time period. Mm -hmm. But when they started taking things apart, I'm thinking, no, this goes way back much farther than that. And, and Seal had a thing to do. I think mm -hmm. he did have a thing. Because John Walton wanted that period that you mentioned mm -hmm. because it would be a cheaper restoration right. than going back to Rosalind's time. Well, it was really all we knew. <coughs> and yeah. we knew it was here during that time period. We just didn't know at what level it existed earlier. Right. And when William Seal was hired, was he hired by the society or by park and planning or or and who did he kind of report to i think he reported to ann but i think the money flowed from park and yes okay. it did. Yeah. It, yeah all the big money came either from the county or the state we got money from the state too well and william seal 
certainly became sort of this premier yes. you know, voice of restoration, and he yes. worked on the White House, and he worked on the State Department. Yes. Was, he, was he there at the time he was working with Riversdale, or was this earlier in his career? This was earlier in his career. But he was here quite a bit. Yeah, he was. I mean, well, most of yeah. us were on first-hand names with, with each other. We well, each and I know family. he, when he passed away this year, he gave yeah. his papers to Winterthur, I think. I and Patrick and I are going to go down and take a look at those papers yeah. because yeah. all of his records from Riversdale are there. Wonderful. I don't know how much that really constitutes, yeah. Yeah. but certainly those records are there. So okay. that, will, that will tell us a lot. So what were the, what, what do you, re, all three of you, what, what do you recall as sort of the big moments? What were the, what were either the hard decisions or the most meaningful decisions? Or, let me ask it differently, the result of those decisions. Um, you know, when did you walk in here and go, oh, now we're on the way? I mean, what, what were those big moments like? Well, I, 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 can, I was convinced much earlier than that. I think what really convinced me that they used to live here was that little spoon. The, what's yeah, his name? Found it. Julie found it. Yeah. Who was Dusty Rhodes? Julie found it. Julie found Julie it. Julie Rhodes found it. We were we were mm -hmm. going to find out what was in all the dirt between all the joists upstairs and mm -hmm. downstairs. I see us dirt diggers. We dug all kinds of stuff. We found a lot in here. Right? Yeah. yeah, but we found that little silver spoon. That Rosalie had said she the silver she had and it was had the maker on it and everything. I said that they really were here. They left a footprint. Yeah. You know where they, she found that? <laughs> when they were restoring this house, they took the, the hallway out. Yeah. And there's a wall under there that's this wide. Mm -hmm. And we were walking on top of that wall. And Julie and Dusty and I were here one day to see what had been done. And Julie bent down and said, what's this? Yeah. It was on top of that wall. How in the world it ever got there, I would never know. Because there was no crack that was big enough for that spoon to fall through. Yeah. But it was on top of that wall. Mm. And it had Rosalie's uh, initials on it. And, and George's. Think, yeah. And George's. They were intertwined. Yeah. 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 That's one still over. And where? Yeah. And where was that spot expa exactly you found? It was down here. You know where the the right door to the pantry is? Yes. yes. Right yeah. outside that door. Right outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right outside the door to what's now the Rutledge Pantry. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there were some other little things that people found. I found nothing but dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one. But I think should have been with us that day when we were up in the nursery. Yeah. But what we was found that thing. You yeah, talk about a fantastic thing. Yeah, you know, they had to take up some of the floor up yeah. there because it was weak. Well, there's little doll clothes under there. There what was a, a yeah. comb, toothbrush, toothbrush. coins. Yeah. Yeah. A That's a lot of what's over in the case coins. in the visitor yeah. center. Right. Right. right, right. So those were all found together yeah. in the nursery. In that, in that nursery. Mm. That was and it was found by a volunteer. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Who convinced us to go looking through all that dirt? I can't even remember who suggested awesome. it, but we yeah. were all eager to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's why I've got masks at home. Yeah. We wore those masks. Yeah. yeah we did. Oh, because the dirt in the yeah. asbestos yeah. and the plastic. They were so dusty yeah. and dirty. Yeah. So <laughs> how, long, how long did the three of you keep digging around the dirt in this house? I mean, it sounds like you must have been at it for. Ten years or more? No. <coughs> well, no, no. It seems like it was ten years. Though. I'm sure. <coughs> well, when we started, when we started originally and that opened it the first time. Yeah. It probably was ten years. I mean, well, I finally had a job for money, and she finally got a job for money, so we didn't <laughs> have much time. <laughs> You know, yeah. to do all this kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was on Saturdays or and Sundays. And didn't have a free labor anymore. Yeah. No, sure <laughs> but my, my grandson worked here to, to taking stuff yeah. when he was little. He yeah. would come up here with me. But we'd have day workers. People yeah, would come in and just work for a little while. Mm -hmm. And, I, and what, what would they do? What, what kind of work were they doing? 
manual labor. <laughs> Taking a bucket moving of dirt rocks, and moving rocks, moving rocks, bricks. Taking and bricks around. Moving yeah, rocks. They like we dug out the south steps there. We had them carrying dirt and bricks and everything, stacking them out over here. And was there the we we love the wallpaper that's in the study in Mr. Calvert's office there, and there's <clears throat> that one piece that we always talk about original to the house. Yeah. Were you all involved in, when that was discovered, or yeah. can you think share with us how that came? Yeah. About? What's that story? Um. I think it was when we first started remodeling, and of course they were going to close close the wall up there like it was originally and started taking all the stuff down and they took down the shelves that were there in front of that. And all of a sudden there was the wallpaper in such good condition, none of us knew there was wallpaper back there. And uh, it was a Dorothy King that said that was original stuff because she, she was into ancient art and all that kind of good stuff. And, and she was just thrilled to be, Death. And I think she went home and did some research she and all that kind of stuff. Now, did, I was going to say, did she like look at it and have a good idea, or did she say, "Let me go do the research," and came back and said, "Guess what? We just found." I mean, yeah, I think that's pretty much the way it worked. She thought she knew what she was mm -hmm. seeing when it first when she first saw it, mm -hmm. but uh, then when she found out it was for real, yeah. she was so excited you could hardly oh believe it. Mm -hmm. So this piece is found behind the shelf, the bookshelves and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Who was it who did the research? Dorothy King. Dorothy, Dorothy King. King. She comes back and says it's original. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's George and Rosalie's time. Mm -hmm. And it was just that one panel, like between the door and the corner? Yes. In the, OK, and then what? They found it in New York. How do we know that it's in New York? How, well, the Metropolitan Museum had it, right? Right. But how did we know that? How did well, see, I don't, it? That's where I think Dorothy found that out. Well, I think there was also an accident. Accident. That's what you say. This is God's house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it was Dan and I, or something. We were up here at the secondhand bookshop, and we were buying some books, and leafing through one of them. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> oh my gosh. Was, it was that room. Oh my gosh. And we couldn't believe it. And so we took an hour where we could look at it better. I'm not sure it was that room or the one in New York or what, its sister. Yeah. yeah. But at any rate. And somebody that went the to New York yeah. compared the whole thing and they found out there there was a room in the New York Metropolitan Museum or Art I don't know oh. which one. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Mm -hmm for a room just this size. And as I have heard the story, they had the wallpaper, but it was not necessarily on display, which is why they were willing to sell it. Yeah. Right? And so Doris, you were beginning to tell the story about raising money to go buy the wallpaper. Well, and, and I'm trying to remember, because I know Anne was not happy, because somebody yes. took it out of her hands uh -huh. <laughs> right. and decided we're going to, um, buy this wallpaper and raise money to buy this wallpaper. Mm -hmm. And she was, I guess, because it wasn't it something she hands. did, <laughs> you know, she was not happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. But we got the wallpaper anyway, whoever did it, and I, and I, I think I it was Louise. I remember Louise, Louise Dillard, uh, she was the wife of one of the professors that was I, I, over at Merrill, made a good size contribution to right. the fund. Right. Yeah, there were a lot of people really put put money into put that money fund for that wallpaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but I do remember that some of the people at least were involved in building National Harbor. And they even prepared a plaque that they wanted us to put up oh, yeah. with all the names of those main contributors. That's right. And Anne said, and I agreed with her, she says, we're not putting up flags yeah. around this house, yeah. so who donated what? Right. And nobody was happy, because they, they gave money, they wanted mm -hmm. their they name. They wanted their name up. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but we won. I think mostly due to Anne, I mean, she, yeah, yeah that's not going to happen. And the chandelier that's now down in the gallery, that was in oh. the, in the in salon. salon. Yeah. And well, how, the, I, I know. Oh, that's Pickford. 
Pick for the book and move to all that stuff in it. With that, that big chandelier, I think, was part of Pickford's decorations yeah. from that old hotel in Alexandria. Right. From the old hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of in mirrors that he made. Oh, the mirrors like and all of that stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we Do lost those. those. They were mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were two other mirrors that have disappeared that we've never figured out. Maybe they were sold and I missed it. But you know, we were in the opposite walls down there in the parlor. The long skinny ones? Not the long skinny oh, ones, the, but the yeah, no, which one you mean. Yes, yes. Mirrors. About that size or a little bigger than that. Oh, they were bigger than that. They would have filled most okay. of that space. Yeah. yeah. But they're on the the walls uh so going to the par going to the salon? Yes. Yeah. yeah. One one on one yeah. one, one on the other. I, so those right. went yes. to that um man who wanted them had an art uh, place. See, we can't remember. And I right. can't remember his name. Uh, but he promised us some more yeah. of the period yeah. we needed. And was we that never Taylor we Wells? never got never came to uh, the was was that that Taylor? Taylor Wells? No, that wasn't Taylor. Or was it Trubetsky? No. Trubetsky? No. no. There is some businessman somewhere, I think. Okay. Down, in Washington, down in Washington. Yeah. Acorn but, or something? But I think those Rococo mirrors were installed at the time. This was uh, uh, the night Baltimore, club. The Baltimore yeah. Country Club? Yeah, yeah. Oh, be in those back, back, back that long. It was in the wrong period yeah. for us. But yeah. we were supposed to get right. some kind of a We price. were supposed to get something back. Yeah. And he just did. kept those and mirrors. It just never and, happened. And, and it never happened. And I raised them <laughs> time and time again. Yeah. And nothing ever happened. But they were beautiful mirrors. They and were. I think they were in very good condition. They were. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, now fast forward me <laughs> a little bit. I want to stay where you are because this whole process is fast. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I mean, fast forward me to the museum finally opens to the public in what year, Patrick? 93. 93. 92 or 93. Yeah. So how much of the restoration had been done at that point? What did it look like then? I don't remember. Well, uh, it, it, it was a lot pretty good empty, shape. Empty. I mean, it was... Well, I remember the rooms were pretty empty. empty. There was very little yeah. furnish in here. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And but the, the walls, the, the Plastic cornices, yeah. the woodwork, that had pretty much been done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you which ones are original and which ones aren't. aren't <laughs> because <laughs> I know which ones had disappeared. Yeah. Especially out in the parlor, that yeah. one corner that's on the that side yeah. of the yes, that was almost gone because mm -hmm. of the, yeah. the water. But yeah. there was enough, as I understand it, as I think I was trained, there was mm -hmm. enough of the cornices and things that we could take molds and recreate and yes. fill in where the blanks mm -hmm. were. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so we knew it was the original design. Mm -hmm. Right. We just had to finish it. Right. So that pretty much, that kind of work got done by the time we opened in 92 or 93. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see, what was our little plasterer's name? Uh, most recent. Uh, uh, that was, that was uh, the Rose Tom, Thomas. Um, Brandon Thompson. <laughs> Brandon. 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 Yeah. Oh, I remember Brandon working in the salon. And we thought we would, would never finish. He and right? I would sit down and talk about this. It's like he wanted to, was so bad to get his fingers into everything around him. Mm -hmm. He was so excited about seeing all this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he just didn't have enough money to do all he wanted to do. Oh, and yeah. all this. And I watched <laughs> him one day up on a scaffolding in that room, mm -hmm. up about that far from the ceiling mm -hmm. with a dental pick. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Picking all that yeah. paint out Old of paint. Yeah. 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 Well, and then. It was years after that, I think, that Matthew Mosca came in mm -hmm. and started doing all those paint yeah. samples through mm -hmm. the room yes. to determine the color. And I remember him showing all of us yeah. his work under the microscope. And yeah. you could see all the layers of the paint. But that mm -hmm. was quite a while. Well, it wasn't that much later, was it? Was that late that 90s? That was pretty late. Not too long ago, but it seems like yesterday. Seems like, yeah. yeah. 